got the reading buzzer blog. Um, GSM put up some more previews for Lingo, which will be coming out in June. Then I saw some, while I was reading it, I was thinking, okay, this might not be as bad as we thought. Uh, I'm going to hold out judgment until it debuts. But then I saw something which made a lot of sense about the shows that have been coming out recently. Um, Alex Davis was told by GSN that they're not really looking for anything unless it's got a big name attached to it. And by big name, we're thinking like something along the lines of B-listers. Like uh, people who you recognize but aren't the ones that you know, aren't on the cover of magazines and stuff like that. That got me to thinking, isn't it odd that the shows that have these big names attached to that have more or less sucked? I mean, uh, think about it for a second. Um, dating back to 2008 when they had their, actually dating back to 2006 when they had their first big name host a show in Danny Bonaducci and Starface. It only lasted about 40 episodes before it was yanked. Uh, 2007 really didn't have any big names hosting it. Well, maybe except for, like, GSM Live. I think that's when that debuted. 2007, late 2007. Um, big name in nobody. Never mind then. Actually, that was when Alfonso Ribeiro started to do stuff for them. And there's your B-lister right there. You know, the former child star of Silver Spoons and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. He got Catch-21, and that's an okay show. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Alfonso Ribeiro's hosting. Actually, I hate Alfonso Ribeiro's hosting, but it's a good show. Um, then you got to 2008 still, when you have Carney Wilson. There's your B-lister right there. Now things start to go downhill. Be and my feelings for Carney Wilson hosting are well known. After Carney Wilson started hosting the Newlywed Game, every show that came after it had a had to have a name, so to speak. I mean, you had Hidden Agenda come out around this time. Sure, Debbie Gutierrez isn't much of a name. However, you had a name as a, you know, the producer in Michael Davies, you know, this hotshot producer who uh, did Millionaire, and that's pretty much his only one hit. One, he's pretty much the biggest one hit wonder in game show history, as far as I'm concerned. All I had was one hit with Millionaire, and the rest of the shows either were short-lived or they sucked. I'm looking at you, Chain Reaction. Then we got a name from game show history that we're all familiar with, and that's Wink Martindale. But unfortunately, we got Instant Recall, a show that sucked, too. Then, you know what? Now that I think about it, it wasn't... We're forgetting 2008, where we had How Much Is Enough with a Great Actor... And great host of Corbin Burnson, but his show sucked ass. And then we got Patrick Duffy, the man from Dallas and Step by Step, who sucked at hosting a Bingo America, where they replaced by Richard Karn. I mean, think about it. When Richard Karn outhosts you, you know there's something wrong. Nowadays, they won't even GSM won't even look at a show unless it's got a big name either hosting it or behind it. If you take a look at 20Q with Cat Deagley, the only differences between most of the hosts nowadays on GSN and Cat Deagley is that Cat Deagley actually can host. And she is a big name. She hosts so you think you can dance. Other failures around this time can be attributed with big names. I would say 1 versus 100, believe it or not, is a failure. I mean, sure it's a good show, but you had a big name on that show in Carrie Ann Inaba, who sucks, but the biggest failures have stemmed currently. I'm probably forgetting Late Night Liars, but that was a good show. Lady Miller was a good host, and it had a big name in the uh, Manson Company, but that was short-lived. The biggest names have come around recently. You had Baggage with Jerry Springer, really great show, and Jerry Springer is a great host as well. Then you get with your biggest names, um, Sherry Shepard, great host, she got, I will admit, she did get snubbed for a daytime Emmy nomination, but the people that got the nods, um, Todd Nunez, he did a great job, Wayne Brady, Ben Bailey, 
you know, if they replaced uh, Meredith Vieira with Sherry Shepard, this would have been a great list. And then we got Drew Carey from Propaganza. A show that me and my brother find hilarious, but it's not doing that well in the ratings. I think less than 200,000 people are watching. And then you got the biggest piece of shit ever to run on GSN in Love Triangle with Wendy Williams. They thought going with this big name would do wonders, and there you go. Which is kind of making me leery about lingo. I mean, Bill Ingvall's a good name. I mean, very funny in the Blue Collar Comedy Tour stuff. Uh, he had a sitcom on TBS, which I thought was okay. Could have been a bit better. So, will he... So will Lingo just become, the new Lingo just become another show in a long line of big, with a big name host and just become big failures? Time will tell, but at the rate GSN has had with it, I'm worrying. I really am. I mean... Sure, you'd like to have a big name on your show, but you gotta have, it's more than just having a big name. It's about having a great format, a good format, and a big name that could actually host. So here's my thinking. If you want a big name who loves game shows, can host, and give them a good format, here's my thinking. Hour-long show, five days a week you can do, 40 shows. It doesn't cost too much on the production budget because the show is only one like once a week. And the amount of the money is varied between like five and forty thousand. So here's my thinking. Bring Corbin Birdson back and pick up the chase. I mean, I'm sure Ken Jennings would do it. You have Nancy Christie who can do it. And heck, you could even bring some of the UK chasers along the way. I mean, you can have uh, the Beast, uh, or heck, Iceman or the Bear, the Iceman, aka the Barrister Sean Wallace, can do good with it. So there are good formats out there, GSN. But if you're gonna stick with just having a big name in a lackluster format, people are gonna tune out, and Card Sharks will be drawing bigger numbers than your recent shows. I mean, if you take a look at recent ratings, Card Sharks is beating Love Triangle and Drew Carey's and Propaganda. If you take a look at the ratings, Card Sharks is beating it. Barely, but it's beating it. GSN needs to straighten up their act together, otherwise we won't have a GSN anymore. I don't know how much money they're making, but it seems like they're doing everything for all the wrong reasons.